Hi, this is Kat Khan, and I am interviewing Christina Strain, yes. who's from our Artist Alley at the American Library Association Annual Conference in Anaheim, California, 2012. Um, Christina, you got started as a colorist for yes. Marvel? Yes. Um, in 2003, when I graduated from LS, Louisiana State University, I um, got a job at CrossGen Comics for a hot two months before they tanked. And then I got really lucky and my friend who was running Udon at the time got me a job at Marvel. So I worked um, at Marvel on my first book, Runaways, which I stayed on for six years, five or six years. And I, and I worked for them for eight years. Uh, I really enjoyed working for Marvel. It was a good time. And now you are doing more independent work. Yes. Uh, I got to a point where I had been working on comics for... I did comics for Marvel, DC, Aspen, CrossGen, uh, a few image books. I did a few small things here and there, and covers for a few companies. And I just... I got to a point where I knew from the very beginning that I didn't particularly want to do superhero comics, and I just felt like it was time for me to kind of take that leap and write the kind of comics that I want to work on, so now I'm transitioning into writing in, um, instead of the art side of things, which has been a very interesting transition. <laughs> and you have a webcomic right um, now. My webcomic, um, The Fox Sister. My friend Jade XC and I uh, started almost a year ago, maybe a little, a little over a year ago, um, and we have the first chapter printed and we do one page a week because it's a good, relaxed, lax schedule and we should be done with the whole series by the end of next year because it'll be four chapters long and it's been doing pretty well. I'm very, very pleased because it's, it's very much the sort of thing I want to do, just kind of different stories that uh, have personal meaning uh, for me and it's, it's been a very enjoyable time not coloring. <laughs> Now you also have done some art. Yeah, I also have another book that I did as soon as I as soon as I left Marvel. My friend Adrian Alfona and I, who uh, was my penciler on Runaways, we worked together for several years, and I call him my comic book husband because he and I just completely get each other. We decided to do an art book together um, of just random art from his sketchbook and stuff I pointed at him and said draw this and send it to me and I put it all together and we self-published our art book and we sold a bunch of these to various people at comic conventions who are fans of ours from our previous work. So that's been incredibly satisfying too because um, I still love to color. I just want to color different things and he wanted to draw different things so we were like girls and cute animals let's just do a bunch of that. <laughs> so it was fun. Okay, great. So, um, have libraries been a, a part of what you do, um, how you've grown up, and in, yeah. uh, in your professional career? Yeah, when I was growing up, I grew up on a military base, so all of my reading, um, almost all of the books that I read, I checked out from the library um, in my elementary, middle school, and high school life, like all of that. I started just straight up buying books once I got to college, because I would find that I'd enjoy a book and then not want to give it back. So I started buying books, so my bookshelf collection is pretty obnoxious. But I do still, um, I have I have a few friends that are librarians and I still enjoy going to the library. I just find myself wanting to buy the books because I love books so much. Uh, I just adore yeah. books. I took book, a bookmaking class, so I just enjoy the feel of a hardbound book and everything, so I just... I have my own personal library at home. <laughs> now, Runaways has been a big hit oh, with yeah. the young adult librarians. You yeah. uh, find that uh, a lot of libraries are have yeah. that series? I think actually a major part of the success in Runaways, it's interesting because out of all of the books that I've ever worked on, Runaways and Spider-Man Loves Mary Jane, which is another book I did at Marvel, which libraries also were really good about picking up. Um, a lot of those two books in particular, I've never had nearly as many female fans come up to me at conventions as I have with those two books specifically. And I find that a good percentage of the um, people who come up to me say that they 
would check it out from their library and then like it so much that they went and bought it and then that was the copy that I was usually signing for them. And that made me really happy because it's like, this is the perfect book for a library. It's, you know, it's very teen friendly. It reminds me of the kind of stuff that I liked reading when I was growing up in Asia. Um, it's slightly superhero, but not really, and it's more teen drama and angst. And that was one of the best things about um, working on that book, that it just kind of, I knew the type of people who were reading it were, you know, a lot of young adults. Um, it had a really good wide audience, and and that's the sort of thing I want. I want more people reading comics, getting into comics, um, and making it less of a niche market. And I feel like Runaways and Spider-Man Loves Mary Jane being in libraries helped that exponentially. It was just, it, it was good. And we got, I can't remember, but I think we won some awards from various libraries on that book. I believe um, they made it to it like a, some of the different best lists. Yeah, I think there were a few yeah. team best lists that they made it on, and I can't remember because Marvel was always bad at telling us what we won except for the one Harvey we won. It's just like, would we won something? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that's definitely um, the crown jewel of my career so far. I love that book. Okay, now is there another comic, not by you, that you would recommend to someone to read? There are a few. Um, as far as like graphic novels go, anything by Craig Thompson, like Blankets, uh, Carnet du Voyage, um, Habibi, those skew a little older. Um, Oh, Goodbye Chunky Rice is probably my favorite thing that he's ever done because I think every time I have a friend who moves away, I buy him a copy of that mm, book because I think yes. that book is just one of the most beautiful things I've ever read. And um, there's a few Japanese ones that I really like. Um, there's a lot of manga. I'm trying to remember. Oh, I also love Derek Kirk Kim. Anything that he does, he's just one of my favorites. I'm very into indie comics. <laughs> And then, as far as web comics go, there's one that I really enjoy, and I'm so impressed by it. Uh, it's called TJ in a Mall um, by E.K. Weaver. It's a weekly web comic about um, two guys who um, drive across country and they end up falling in love, falling in love along the way. And it reminds me a lot of Strangers in Paradise. It's just the it's written beautifully, it's paced perfectly, the art is incredible, and I just couldn't speak highly enough for that book. It's just very, it's the characters feel real and authentic, and it's touching, and their relationship with each other is amazing. And it just, it really reminds me of Terry Moore so much, and I just absolutely adored Strangers in Paradise. So it's amazing to see somebody who's never really done comics professionally be able to pull out like that. I'm like, holy crap, it's another Terry Moore. <laughs> and E.K. E. K. Weaver is super nice. She's incredible, and she's a graphic designer by day. And, you know, amazing comic artist by night. So I really, I couldn't recommend that web comic enough. Okay, and um, this is one kind of put you on the spot a little bit. <laughs> what would you like libraries to do for comics that you don't see them doing yet? It's it's a tough one, um, and I say that specifically, not necessarily only in the case of library. It's, it's tough because I know a lot of people want to do more digital content stuff nowadays. Um, and I know the way of the future is eventually to somehow figure out a way of doing digital con uh, content within libraries and the internet or whatever you, the case may be. Um, I, I'm not sure. It's tough because I, I know this the way of the future, but I like the feel of a real book. Like, I love the smell of it and everything. So I... And I guess it depends on the library, too. When I go into one, I don't really have a problem with it, but maybe it's just because that's what I'm used to, and I'm I understand. I only think this is a library. You know, I'm getting what I expect, and I just don't know what the future of print is going to be like. So it's hard for me to make those suggestions, um, just because I I have no idea. It's a weird publishing in general right now is going through such a weird transition, and I'm kind of just I'm trying to do what I can for myself and the stories that I want to tell and. I feel like web comics are a good route to go to get as many people to read it as possible, but I still print it because I like the printed content. So I'm not really sure. Um, I know that it would be nice to see libraries that are probably a little more uh, skewing a little more towards younger audiences, just to kind of get more people in. Um, 
but and I would definitely know that there are a lot of younger people who like to read graphic novels and they'll go to a library and get it if they can get their hands on it. So I would definitely like to see bigger um, graphic novel sections, but it, that's a tough one to answer and I wish I had a better Yeah, response. I told you I was going to put you on the spot.